All right, so we're looking at the heart, where it's placed, and its connection to the lung, what we call the pulmonary circuit. All right, so let's get some general things out of the way. So the external features of the heart, all right? We see here, this little extension is called an auricle. That would be the right auricle, sits on top of the right atrium. Uh, it's connected to the right ventricle. Okay, then there's going to be a wall between the two, the interatrial and interventricular septum, separating the right from the left ventricle, and that's going to connect up to the left atrium, and you can see the little extension coming off of that. That's the left auricle. All right? See that the heart is just slightly left of the midline. You see that the heart is sitting on top of the diaphragm and is adhered to the diaphragm by fibrous connective tissue. Right. You see some of the large vessels, so let's name some of those. Inferior vena cava, superior vena cava. Okay, Th these two vessels are collecting most of the blood from the body and returning it to the right atrium. You see some of the contributing veins to the superior vena cava. And we'll just name these to get them out of the way, right? So this and this have the same name. This is the right brachiocephalic vein. And this is the left brachiocephalic vein. That's it, it's from here to here. That's the brachiocephalic. Mm -hmm. Then there's two that contribute to the brachiocephalic. This is the right subclavian and this is one of the two jugulars. The larger jugular tends to be the internal jugular. There's also an external. The model doesn't show the external. Brachiocephalic, again, same mirror image. Internal jugular, subclavian on the left side, okay? This is the inferior thyroid vein. But these are bringing the oxygenated blood back to the heart. Okay, in fair vena cava, there's going to be a bunch of different branches contributing to that too, and we'll talk about those in the future. The red stuff here. This is the aorta. It is an ascending component. Then it's going to curve back and make the arch. And then if we pop this out, it curves back. There's the arch, and then it goes down, becomes the descending or thoracic and then it's gonna pierce through the diaphragm and become the abdominal aorta. And there's gonna be lots of branches off of that supplying blood to body parts. You got a couple of the branches up here. So let's name those. Unlike the veins, which are mirror images of one another, the arteries up here are not. What's happening here on the right is different than what's on the left. On the right, from here, from the aorta to here, this one inch piece, that's called the brachiocephalic trunk. It only exists on the right, not on the left. Coming off of the brachiocephalic, then you have your right subclavian and your right common carotid arteries. On the left, there's no brachiocephalic. The common carotid and the subclavian come directly off of the aorta. So slight difference there. Let's go to the pulmonary circuit and let's go to flow. All right, let's pop this off. Maybe it'll show better. All right, so deoxygenated blood is collected from the body. It's going to arrive here in the right atrium via the inferior vena cava, the superior vena cava, and we haven't talked about it in detail yet, but from the coronary sinus. Okay, they're bringing deoxygenated blood to the atrium. The atrium's gonna pass it to the ventricle, to the right ventricle. It's gonna pass through this white thing. This is one of the major valves of the heart. Okay, this is the tricuspid valve or the right atrioventricular valve. Passes through the valve, here it is in the right ventricle. Right, right ventricle is gonna contract and it's gonna push the blood here into this large vessel. This is the pulmonary trunk. Where the ventricle meets the trunk, so right in this zone right here, they call it the conus arteriosus, right? Conus arteriosus. Right. 
there's a vowel there. Second vowel, first vowel, second vowel. That's the pulmonary semilunar vowel. It's going to pop open. The oxygenated blood is going to enter the pulmonary trunk. And then it's going to, the pulmonary trunk is going to split. It's going to have a branch going to the left side, left pulmonary artery. And it's going to have a branch going to the right side, the right pulmonary arteries. And those attach to the right lung. And as you can see, this one attaches to the left lung. And that pulmonary artery then is going to branch to smaller arteries as it makes its way to what's called the alveoli of the lung. The alveoli are where the air that's going to exchange the oxygen is found in the lung. There's going to be exchange of oxygen. Deoxygenated blood blue is going to turn into oxygenated blood red. And now small little vessels are going to make their way back to the heart. They're all going to lead to these guys right here. These are the left pulmonary veins, bringing blood, oxygenated blood, back to the heart. There they are. And they all connect to the left atrium. Same on this side. A whole bunch of pulmonary veins are going to bring oxygenated blood back to the heart, and there they are. The pulmonary veins on the right side, and they all lead to the left atrium. So the left atrium receives the oxygenated blood, passes it to the left ventricle, through another valve, our third valve, that's the left atrioventricular valve, it's called the bicuspid or mitral, and then contraction of the left ventricle is going to force the blood up into the aorta. Okay, and there's going to be another valve, another valve, the aortic semilunar valve that's going to pop open, allow the blood to go into the ascending aorta, to the arch, to the descending, and to all the branches that take the blood to the different parts of the body. Pulmonary circulation, right side to lungs, lungs to heart, systemic circulation, heart to body parts, body parts back to the heart. Good.